What is going on, my friends? Today we are talking about something super important for your development uh, in MK Mobile, for the development of your account, actually, not your development in specific. Now, today we are talking about the character shop, or in other words, which characters you should buy from the shop. And the answer to this question is simple. Actually, it's not that simple. The answer to this question splits in two. The first part of it revolves around the characters that are super useful at Fusion Zero. So in other words, as long as you unlock them, they are extremely impactful. And I decided to make this video today because currently at the shop I have two of those characters. The first one is High Tech Jackie. As you can see, I already purchased her. In fact, I grinded my ass off today in order to uh, purchase High Tech Jackie bricks. There are certain reasons for that. We're going to get to that later. All I'm saying is that she's one of those characters that are extremely impactful at Fusion Zero. And the second one is Sonya Blade, Combat Cup version. What you need to remember about those characters is that they're super, super useful at Fusion Zero, but they're not worth further investment. For instance, I would love to have High Tech Jackie in my collection, but if she counts again, in the shop, I will never purchase her because even at Fusion 10, she isn't really the best fighter in the game. Uh, so you don't really get tons of value by fusing her up. The same applies for Combat Cup Sonya, even though in my opinion, she's better than Jackie at High Fusion because of stats, everything, you name it. But at the end of the day, all I want to do with her is just to unlock her. Apart from that, I just forget that she exists and I'm perfectly fine with that. So in other words, the characters, the gold characters that you should buy from the store are characters that are very, very impactful at Fusion Zero. So how do you know which of those characters? Again, you can recognize them by their passives. The passive says, uh, for instance, plus one bar of power, or let's say plus 30% attack. So regardless of the fusion of the character, the passive will work. However, if the passive says, for instance, uh, he deals 50% more damage against uh, Outworld. Uh, this damage is based on his or her fusion. So if the character is super, super weak, this 50% damage to Outworld won't be that strong. So this is how you distinguish between those characters. And of course, you have to keep in mind what, uh, what are the actual benefits that the character is providing. For instance, let's take a look at uh, Blood God Koto Khan. Koto Khan summons a totem of his special attack to choosing between damage boost, healing, or power generation boost. Now, this is only for himself, so he isn't really worth buying in the shop at all. Uh, let's take a look at Cyrex, though. Look at this. All tribal characters on your team gain increased critical um, hit chance for special attack 1, and everyone on your team gains 50% critical damage. Now, Cyrex is one of the very interesting characters, the most interesting characters in the game, for two reasons. Because uh, his passive is kind of very useful, and I'm still using Cyrex very actively on my main account, where I have almost everything maxed out. But, in the beginning of the game, you have to ask yourself the question, what is your critical hit chance? Do you usually have high critical hit chance? If the answer is yes, then you have to go ahead and buy Cyrox. However, if you can hardly get all the way up to 15 to 20% critical hit chance on average per character, then you don't really require Cyrox. So it's not really, he's not really worth spending at this point. Let's check another character. Slash Jason, I mean, uh, he's a pay to win card. Uh, we already established that um, he's amazing. And if you can, you should buy the season seven so you can get five copies of him for free. But anyways, let's continue with Dark Lord Kotokan. What he does? Dark Lord Kotokan summons an Oshtek warrior on his special attack too. So in a way, he doesn't provide any assistance to his teammates, so he's not worth buying from the shop. Let's continue with another example. Uh, Treacherous Tanya. What Treacherous Tanya does? Tanya disables her opponent equipment card on any successful special attack. Power Drain has a reduced effect on her teammates. So in a way, she's somewhat useful. However, you have to be really, really cool with navigating her passive. So it's totally up to you. In my opinion, if I was to decide, I would pass on Tanya, even though she's not horrible at having her unlocked. But at the end of the day, she is not a game changer. And this brings me to the second topic. First thing first, you have to identify the characters that are really useful at low fusion, such as High Tech Jackie, because look at this. All Spec Op teammates have plus 20% increased power generation. And then you have to think of whether those characters are going to benefit your strongest characters, your current strongest characters. So, which are my strongest characters? Let's, uh, 
basically sort everything by attack. Look at this. I have Cover Tops, Cassie, Classic Scorpion, Kenshin, Ojutsu Scorpion, and MK11 Scorpion. Out of those five cards, two of them are Spec Ops. So having High Tech Jackie will greatly benefit two of my strongest characters. And this is the main reason why I decided to buy Jackie, because I need my uh, two of my main damage dealers, Kenshi and uh, Cassie, to become stronger. And 20% power generation boost is a lot. So I hope this answers the question partially, which characters you should buy, because the second part uh, of the video is coming right now. We already established the good characters that you should buy are support characters that can uh, more or less amplify your or boost your main fighters, your strongest characters. And now the second types of characters that you should buy from the store are the characters that you are currently building. <laughs> I believe that is kind of self-explanatory. For instance, if I go to my collection and I sort by um, attack, you can see that my strongest characters are Covertops, Cassie, Kenshin, Nujutsu Scorpion, and Kevin Scorpion. So, if I get Covertops Cassie in the store, I have to buy her, 100%, because she's currently my main character, and I want her to become even stronger. The same applies for Kenshi. For instance, if I get Kenshi, I would love to get another copy and max him out. If I get Nunjitsu Scorpion, the same I can do. Uh, as you can see, those five characters are my main weapons at the moment. I don't have anybody else. But for instance, currently, I have a character who is growing stronger. Uh, I'm talking about Stun Double Johnny Cage. So if I get another copy of him, probably I'll start developing him, which means that if I get him in the store, I will spend 250 souls so that he can become even stronger. Uh, currently, I will try also to develop Classic Sonia because it is her challenge. So if I get her Fusion 2 and Fusion 3 and she becomes one of my strongest cards, I would love to get another copy of her so that she can become even stronger. So at the end of the day, if I have to summarize the video, I cannot give you a list of all cards that are worth purchasing at Fusion Zero because it all depends on your current roster. But at the end of the day, the cards that you must buy from the store are the cards that are extremely beneficial at low Fusion, so they don't rely on Fusions. All you need to do is to unlock them to get the beneficial effect. For instance, one final example, uh, Combat Cup Sonya. She can give red card regardless of the Fusion. There was a fight in the Shurayu Tower, I got stuck, and I only beat it because I gave a red card to one of the guys. So, in a way, she was pivotal for my success in this battle, and she was level 2 at this point. I didn't care about her level, all I wanted the effect of her passive. So, this is the first type of characters that you should be after. Characters that are extremely, extremely beneficial at Fusion Zero, that can work, their passives work at Fusion Zero. And the second types of characters that should be purchasing from the store are basically, basically your strongest cards. So if you have, for instance, if Hanso Hasashi Scorpion is your main character, he's Fusion 4, and if you get another Hanso Hasashi in the store, it makes sense to purchase him. If, for instance, uh, Covert Ops Cassie Cage is your stronger character, he, she's a Fusion 3 like mine, then it makes sense to purchase another copy so that she becomes even stronger. This is the main logic after buying characters from the store as a beginner. All right, guys, this is going to be all for you today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and have an amazing rest of your day. Take care, guys. Perfect.